Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Tom Christie in the painting studio, and this will be session three of painting a spectacle biter drake. If you didn't see the previous two, uh, there are two other painting sessions where we laid the base colors on the bird, and today we'll begin to do some of the detailing work to add detail over those base coat layers. If you just discovered my channel, um, there is a whole playlist on this bird down at the bottom of the home page. You can find uh, Spectacle Biter Drake, and I have all of the videos related to this bird grouped together so they're easy to access that way if you want to tackle a Spectacle Biter Drake. There are other species down there as well, so mallards, uh, canvasbacks, wood ducks and I want to continue to build the channel. If you're getting value out of my channel, the feedback has been great and encouraging, but if you are, please hit the subscribe button. I would appreciate that. It helps me out. It doesn't cost anything. This is all free, and uh, my goal is to encourage wildfowl carving and uh, allow others to get the joy that I get out of carving birds and trying to duplicate wildlife in wood. So let's get started on session three of painting the Spectacled Eider Drake. Welcome back. Before we move on, I did want to mention one quick change I made. I extended the gray scapular feathers back over this white. I had wrapped the white clear up under the thorn feathers, and just looking at my reference, it looked like uh, it's more times than not that these gray scapulars are kind of covering up most of that white. So I uh, did make that quick change for your reference. Okay, I wanna start with the black sections and do some black on black. We want to um, maintain the nice, rich, dark character of these feathers but we want to put enough detail in that it's not just flat black uh, as well. So I'm using burnt umber with just a touch of nimbus gray to give me this kind of gray-brown value. And I'm using a very small scrubber to go in and highlight the inside of these tail feathers so that it adds to the layered look of the feathers, but we don't lose the black character. Uh, so if you overdo it, these will be too light and everything starts to look like it's gray instead of a rich, dark black. So it's very subtle. I did do a black on black painting video. If you haven't seen that, um, these techniques will be demonstrated in, in that video. You may want to check that out. But I just want to put a very subtle highlight on the inside of these feather edges. And if you go too far, do too much, you can always come back with just more burnt umber and darken things back down. And we want to blend from the inside to the outside. I'll also come back with the carbon black and go from the outside back in and kind of blend colors together. Uh, but this is a very repetitive process, so I'll do the tail feathers and then we'll move on to the tail covert section. Now I'm coming back with some carbon black just kind of hitting the feather edges. And notice that the highlighting left the carved splits dark, which is what we want. It'll make them show up. 
I'm just using the carbon black and kind of blending back in the opposite direction to darken things up a bit, and make sure there's consistency and a nice soft look in these blends on the tail feathers. Again, we want to keep them nice and dark. Now I'm going to use the chalk pencil and just very lightly sketch in where my coverts are here. They're carved in so it's it's easy to spot, but I want to go ahead and mark them in and then um, put in some additional feathers here that we're going to want to blend in. Just kind of eyeballing that and I'll get this laid out and then we'll come back and do some highlighting. All right, now I've got a little scrubber and I've got my Burn Umber Nimbus Gray mix. More burnt umber, by the way, than Nimbus Gray to keep it dark. And I'm just going into each of these, the base of each of these feathers, lightening the base and then fading that out by lightening the pressure on the brush as you go out towards the tip of the feather. So it leaves the tip dark. And again, if you get it too light, you can always come back with a wash uh, and darken things up or add more burnt umber to the mix and go back over it. And I'm also kind of erasing my chalk lines as I go by running over those with the brush. So we're just trying to develop some structure here so that, again, it doesn't just look like a flat black area and some indication of feathers. I don't like the way I drew that. And that's the beauty of the chalk pencil. You can erase, come back. I want that feather a little larger, that's better. So I'll finish up this area, then we'll move up here to the primaries. Okay, I've got the first pass done on the uh, highlighting of the base of the feathers. Now, same thing we did with the tail feathers. I'm coming back with the carbon black, starting at the tip of each feather, really defining the tip with carbon black and then blending that back into the base highlighting. Because uh, if I just left it like this, it's too light. It comes off brown from a distance and even close up and we want it to be perceived as, as really dark black. I know I'm repeating that a lot, but it's uh, easy to do to get things too light and let this highlighting get too dominant and then uh, make everything look too light. The other thing that helps me do is get rid of these chalk lines, just kind of defining the feather edges with the carbon black. So I'll continue to work that. There's not much under the rump here, so I'm not going to put feather detail under the rump. I don't think we need it there. I'll continue to work to soften this whole area by going back and forth, and then we'll work on the primaries next. Now I'm just going to use the chalk pencil to kind of pencil in the quills. That'll help us as we begin highlighting these feathers, 
kind of just a guideline. So we're going to want to highlight the top section of each of these primaries a little bit more than the lower section. Same approach here with the burn umber lightened a bit with Nimbus Gray. Just going in and using those quill guidelines and then beginning to highlight the upper section. I've got a little bit of water in the brush now so that I can make these hard lines against the quill. But I'm going to want to dry that out a bit to promote blending up in this section so the paint is not smearing and it's it's kind of drying out on its own here so i should be good to go get a little more paint so i'll work back and forth like the other blends to make sure there's a, a nice soft blend. You can see I've got some work to do there. And I'll come back in with the carbon black from the outer edge in. Because we want these a little bit lighter near the quill. And then fade out. That's looking better. So I'll do that on both sides. Then we'll come back with the black and make sure we have nice soft blends across there. Taking a smaller scrubber and going into this side of the primary feathers and just putting a little bit of a highlight at the base of each of these. But I don't want much here because these are primarily very dark feathers. I'm just doing this quickly so you can see it, but I'll take my time and make sure these blends are are well done. It just adds a little interest and put some separation in there to complement the carving that we've done. I'll keep working that. Now I'm using carbon black to go ahead and pull in some feather quills and kind of clean up my uh, chalk marks, sharpen things up. And I'll do the same back here on the tail feathers. You're not going to see many quills back here but a few. Same thing on the tail coverts. Just pulling in some quills. and these feathers on the rump. Now I'm using a little raw sienna mixed with Nimbus Gray just to give us this slightly sienna value and just using that to go in and highlight just the tips of the primary flight feathers 
and also doing kind of the same thing on the tips of the tail here, but just fading that out as you go back in the tail, same thing here, I'm just fading it out. So it's very subtle, but it just gives us a little bit of a highlight on the edges of those feathers and makes them show up a little better. And keep the edges down here dark. Now I've got a little mix of burnt umber with the Nimbus Gray to match this underlying color and I'm going to use that to come in here and just add very few splits. Pulling from the lighter areas at the base of the feather into the tip of the overlying feather. Do a few more. Here's base is light here, dark feather tip, a good opportunity to pull in a split there. Maybe a few here, a couple there. We don't want to overdo this, but it helps convey the look of feathers rather than just those hard edges. And then finally, just with the detail brush, this is a, a number four James Company Ultra Point brush, by the way. Really like their brushes. I'm just going in and looking for a place places to put a few dark feather barbs that kind of extend into the lighter area next to it. Here's an example. I'll try to get a close-up. I've got a light area here. It's a good area to go in and put a couple of carbon black feather barbs into that light area. It may show up a little better and just conveys a little bit of looseness in the feathers. Then I'm going back into the tail feathers and just pulling a few painted splits in carbon black to complement the carved splits and add to those. Very fine. Just pull it through the lighter highlighting we did, and they show up that way. I am going to do a little bit of detail on the lower edge of the tail feathers and just show them in here, but not a ton of detail and process is very similar to what we did on top, so I won't spend time in the video doing that. Just remember these feathers overlap in a different way, so get that pattern right uh, top and bottom. Here's just a quick look at the underside of the tail feathers. Dark edges, light like we did on the top. Trimmed it out with uh, the raw sienna with nimbus gray and then put some carbon black feather splits in. Now I just want to add a few indications of feathers up here on the back as we're heading up towards this light section. I'm just kind of randomly sketching in Feathers. It's 
Same routine here using the burnt umber, nimbus gray, and a little scrubber going in and highlighting the, the inner edge of the feather, leaving the, the edges dark. And we don't need much back here. Again, these are dark feathers, but it very quickly gives us a little indication of feathers back here. So you can see some transitioning there, and then we can pull some of that burnt umber nimbus gray color into the white area where they transition. Now we'll come back with the carbon black. Same thing we did back here, so I won't duplicate that, but I'll show you the results when I'm done. So a quick look at that transitional area. So highlighting the base, carbon black on the tips, light splits, a couple of black, uh, splits thrown in, including pulled up into the lighter area, and uh, that's looking pretty good. All right, now we're moving to the side pockets. It's going to be very similar to the process we used back here, starting with a chalk pencil and sketching in the feathers. And I carved in some feather groups. But not all feathers. So I want to get those groups outlined first. So I know where they're positioned. And then sketch in some some other feathers that are not carved but a part of the group. So I'll get those sketched out and then we're going to use a very similar process. <clears throat> Again, I want to keep this very subtle. I want the overall view of the side pocket to be dark and black, but we want to put a, some highlights in so that um, we break this up and make it look more like feathers. For the side pockets, I'm going to use about a quarter inch wide chisel shaped scrubber loaded with that burnt umber nimbus gray mixture. Again, more burnt umber than nimbus gray. And I'm going to use the bigger brush to work faster, but also give a soft blend. The amount of water in the brush is key. And that's a hard thing to convey through video. But if it's too wet, things will be very smeary. If it's right, it'll go on almost like an airbrush. So I'm working some of the water out of this brush because you can see it, it uh, leaves drag marks, etc. And sometimes you can do that just by moving quickly down the bird and defining this these hard edges first. And that's taking some of the water out of the brush. So that it's going to be performing better. There's still quite a bit of water in this brush. I just rinsed it out. So I'll work with it a while, but it's starting to dry out. 
I don't have a lot of texture on this bird. Sometimes I sponge birds and it uh, facilitates dragging paint off the dry brush. But I kept this bird smooth on purpose. And it's a little more challenging, but the same process and approach still apl applies. So I'm gonna go back and forth with this. Again, we're very similar to what we did back here. You can see I've got work to do to smooth everything out and make this look like a nice blend from here to the dark tip of the feather. And I'm gonna come in with carbon black and darken a lot of this back up again. Just getting started. Okay, I made a first pass blending with the lighter value. Now I'm using the same brush, going back with carbon black, hitting the tips to eliminate my chalk marks, and then blending that back. Because again, I wanna darken these so that um, the overall look is black and not brown. So I'm using a little bit more water on the edge to give me a sharper line. And so I'm hitting all these edges while I have a little water in the brush along with the carbon black. And then as the brush dries out, I can do more blending with it. If it's too wet, you can just dab it on a piece of paper towel and dry the brush out a little bit. And then it's more suitable for the blending process. So I'm just going over these feathers lightly and darkening from the tip in. And darkening some of that highlighting that I did before if it's too light. So I'll keep working this side pocket. I did want to show you up here, the breast of the Spectacle Lighter Drake, you see a lot of uh, lines in the breast and not so much individual feathers. So as I'm turning the corner here, I'm just doing more of a, the edge of the brush to give me some feather structure, but very subtle and not very light at all. This, these are probably too light, so I can darken those up by going over them again. But that way, when we pull some lines through here, it's gonna tie in with that feather structure and give the indication that there are individual feathers there, but they're kind of wet and pulling lines across. I'll, I'll be able to explain it better when we get to that point. So I'll go ahead and work this side pocket. I'm gonna hit the opposite side pocket in the same fashion. A Little farther along now in the blending and I'm just still on the carbon black and uh, going in and darkening things up, adding a feather here or there, making sure the edges are fairly sharp so that we can add some splits later. I'm also kind of darkening the under downside of the feather groups to cast a little shadow down below and give it some dimension. I'm just using the side of the brush to scrub back and forth and darken the lower sections of these feather groups. 
And then as I get up front here, I'm just kind of fading this out. Because we'll add detail over this. So we're getting there. If it's too light, you can always go over it with a thin wash of carbon black, and that's probably what I'll do. It has a tendency to tie everything together, knock it down a notch so that the highlights are very subtle. Just got a big filbert and a thin wash of carbon black, and I'm just going in, kind of pulling that in and over. This does two things. It's very watery, so there's not much color, but there is some. And then it also has the tendency, because of the water in there, to pull the dark and light together and hit kind of a mid-tone. The water blends things together. I'll dry that off. I don't know that you'll be able to see that in the video, but it has a tendency to pull everything together. So there's not a lot of contrast there, but we haven't eliminated the highlighting just made it more subtle now i'm using just a soft about quarter inch scrubber and just using the edge of that to come in here and with the burn umber nimbus gray mix and just scrub in some indications of feathers but not trying to be too detailed here. Because we're gonna go over this, as I mentioned, with additional detail. And I'll scrub these until I'm happy with the softness. And that'll become the foundation for lines that we'll pull through here that uh, look more like the breast of an eider. So I'll do that on the opposite side. We'll get the side pockets ready to go. And then we'll probably tackle the scapulars and the tertials and the cape in our next video. Okay, everybody, we'll call that a wrap on session three of painting a spectacled eider drake. And uh, we got a lot of the black on black areas done today. There's still work to do there, and we'll finish that up in session four, along with starting to tackle the tertials and the scapulars next time. Yeah, I'm enjoying putting this together, and uh, hopefully some of these techniques can be applied to other birds that you may be doing. Not, I realize not everybody's going to be doing a spectacle lighter out there, but the techniques can be applied. Black on black can go for uh, divers of all, all sorts. Uh, we'll do some white on white here as well. The color development can be applied to other birds as well, so hoping that's helpful. And until next time, this is Tom Christie signing out. Good carving to all of you.